Bhagavan manifests all the path in the heart of Brahmaji. Saying the beautiful pastimes of Krishna Bhagavan. Saying the beautiful pastimes of Krishna, even Indra and the Migos, they become completely amazed. Water, light means the moon. Yes, the Guru explains. They change their nature when they hear the beautiful past. They see the beautiful pastimes of Krishna. Seeing the beautiful pastimes of Krishna, everyone becomes completely charmed and enchanted. So in Bhagavan Parameshwar is beyond Satarajan Tamogun. Completely devoid of the pristine hypocrisy. He is the embodiment of the truth. Supreme Lord, I meditate upon him. He describes in the commentary. Bhagavatam. Shumani Bhagavatam Sarata Darshini commentary to the Bhagavatam. Bhagavan is Sata Sarupa, embodiment of the truth. Meditate in Sata Swarupa, Lord, the embodiment of the truth. In this context, you're hearing that Bhagavan has three Dhammas. One in Dwarka, another in Mathura, and third dam is Nitya Goloka Vrindavan. But Shama Gavan, even though he is one, by the influence of his inconceivable potency, he manifests in three forms. He is Purna, complete, in Mathura. Purna Tara, more complete. And in Goloka Vrindavan, he is Purna Tama, topmost complete. This is called Asar Marda Tattva. means what to speak of being someone being on the same level as him. Like what to speak of someone being higher than him. No one can even be on the same level. He's like incomparable. Asar Marda Tattva. 
Isso é tantra que se chama Ipros, completamente independente, Supreme Person. Bhagavan is also the uh, origin and the um, repository of all the rasas. He is the rasa swarup. He nourishes the rasa. <laughs> Sr. Bhagavan of his potency, his potency, Chit Shakti, Jiva Shakti, and Maya Shakti. With the, with the Chit Shakti, he is manifesting the spiritual world. Like Vaikuntha in this kind of dhams. With the Jiva Shakti, he is manifesting all the Jivas. Mokta Jivas and Bada Jivas are there. Mokta Jivas is staying in the spiritual world. And Bada Jivas, they are deluded by Maya and they are completely illusioned, like under the illusion, in this material world. Wandering this material world. Sometimes they go to Swaga. Sometimes they go to Narak, to the hell. They're enjoying suffering like this. It's very hard to understand the Maya of Bhagavan. Being under the illusion of Maya, the Jiva forgets his own Swarup. <coughs> Forgotten Krishna means not serving Krishna. Seeing the glitter of Maya, the jivas become attracted by Maya, and then Maya catches catches the jiva. Then Maya has two kind of vritis tendencies. I told. But remember the names. One is. Avaranatmika Vritti and another Vikshep Atmika Vritti. Avaran means to cover, covering the jiva with the gross and subtle bodies. <laughs> with the five elemented body, gross body, Panchabhotik Sharir, made of earth, ether, air, fire, water. So these are five elements in our body. It's a body made of man, buddhi, ahankara, chitta, mind, intelligence, ego, and heart, and the soul is in it. And also, covered by these two bodies, also Maya binds us very nicely, this package of our body, with three ropes, the three ropes of Satarajan and Tamagun. Then Maya Deva Vikship throws us. <coughs> and the Jiva is wandering in this material world like this. So this shloka explains Krishna does not say Jesus. We are suffering Maya because we forgot Krishna since time immemorial. So this is the duty of Maya. Okay, so Chit Shakti, spiritual potency, manifest spiritual world. Jiva Shakti, manifest the Jivas. Maya Shakti, material world. So Swayam Bhagavan. He is with his eternal associates in the spiritual world. Radishing, Lila, Rash, Rosh. The smellows of the pastimes. Mm. 
So in this verse of Madhasa Jata, first verse of the Bhagavad it's describing all this. Even though Bhagavan is unborn, even though he's unborn, he takes birth. In he takes birth in Nita Goloka Vrindavan. In Vrindavan he manifests the Janma Lila. Actually in Nita Goloka Vrindavan there is no actual birth. God has two kinds of Lilas. One is Nita Lila and Nita Lila. Nita Lila, another is Naimitic Lila. Rasa Lila is the Nita Lila. You say Nita Lila. And the rest, other pastimes, generally, they are called Naimitic Lila. The Gaudiya Siddhanta explains like this. Krishna in the spiritual world does not take birth. There's no Janmalila. But looks like this happens. Like Mother Shuddha feels, she thinks, oh, so they have give, given birth to my baby. But how is it possible? Anyway, Jogamaya performs the pastimes like this. The celebration of Nanda Maharaj for the birth of Krishna, everything is there. <coughs> also in the spiritual world, there is no killing the demons, Asur Maran Lila. Some Lilas there are only Baba Matra. They are called Bhava Matra, mood only. But to understand what is only mood, Bhava Matra is very hard. Shlajeva Goswami Pan. In the commentary, he explains some pastimes are Bhava Matra, only mood. For example, Putana, demons. Who would become Putana in the spiritual world? There is no demon there. There are no demons there. Like Agasur, Bakasur, all this. They are not there because they are demons. If there are no demons, then how to have the Lila of killing the demons, right? So that's why Jogamai is only creating the mood. Like the, feels like, looks like these things happened. Oh, today Krishna has killed this demon, this, this demon, for example. But when Swami Bhagavan manifests his pastimes in this world, when he uh, comes from the spiritual world and manifests Lila here, then this takes form, killing the demons. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says he comes every yuga, every millennium to Paritranaya Sadhunam. To protect the saints and to kill the demons. I come from the spiritual world, Nityadham, to this world, perform my pastimes, Krishna says. <clears throat> In Nityadham, Vrindavan, like this, in the spiritual world, there are the Nita Lilas. Yes, they are told, Bhagavan has three dhams. Also in Bhagavan, in Dwarika Puri, he got married to 16,108 queens. And he's having a family life in Dwarika. For him, best times like a human being.
Rukmini Sathya Bhama are there in Dwarika. All these queens are there. These queens are not ordinary. Who are they? All of them they are manifestation of the gopis of Braj. Uh, this Rukmini Devi is Chandravali in Braj. <coughs> Chandravali manifests as Rukmini in Dharka. Shumata Radhika manifests in Dharka like Satyabham. <coughs> All the Braj Gopis. They're in the one form, they are doing lilas in Dwarka. So, three places of Bhagavan. Vrindavan, Mutura, and Dwarka. Bhagavan, he manifests, he stays in his Nija Swarupa, his own form in Vrindavan. Actually, Krishna never goes out of Vrindavan. Maturadish Krishna also is always in Mathura. And in Dwarika, Krishna is also always in, in the form of Dwarika Dish, always there. <laughs> In this spiritual world, world, there is no gamana gamana. What is the meaning of gamana gamana? Going here and there. In the Prakart Lila manifested past times. Looks like Krishna is going from Vrindavana to Mathura and then Mathura to Dharika. But in the spiritual world, Nitya Goloka Vrindavana is eternally in this abode. But still in the Prakart Lila, Manifested pastimes. Remember, Krishna has two kinds of pastimes: prakart and aprakart. Manifested and unmanifested. In the aprakart, unmanifest, there is no gamana gamana going here and there from one dham to another. But by the Jogamaya, when Bhagavan manifests his pastimes in this world, looks like Bhagavan is going from Vrindavana to Mathura and then Mathura to Darka. But actually, this is also not true. He's not actually going. It just looks like he's going. The Krishna of Vrindavan, he never leaves the borders of Vrindavan. Never, ever. Krishna says, I don't give a step out of Vrindavan. I never go anywhere outside Vrindavan. I always stay there. In Prakart Leela, manifested pastimes, also we see when Akrur, when Akrur came to pick up Krishna Balaram and wanted to put them sitting on his chariot, so they sat on the chariot. And then when Akrur, taking Krishna Balaram, they came to the border. He came, he came to the border of Mathura and Vrindavan. Actually, before coming to the border, Vrindavan and Krishna disappeared. And immediately, of course, in the border, the Mathura Krishna sat on the chariot. Okay. Then, yeah, then this lila took place. Krishna explains. Krishna says, I don't give one step, I don't take one step out of Vrindavan. Krishna of Vrindavan never goes away of Vrindavan. But his Prakash manifestations. Are in other abodes. So, in this way, Swami Bhagavan is performing all these pastimes. <coughs> so, Shri Vishwanath Chakravarti Pad is saying here.
reisem. Vyasa Deva, he is meditating his worshipful deity in the beginning of the Bhagavatam. In the Mangala Charan. So there are, there, there are three things Mangala Charan, Ashirvad, and Bostuni Dish. So by the Mangala Charan, like this verse, first verse of the Bhagavatam, is like the Mangala Charan of the Bhagavatam, auspicious invocation. Janma Dasa Jata Janma Ade Yas. Bhagavan, who is the embodiment of the truth, he is beyond all time. He is beyond dish and kal, like time and circumstance. Like whatever we speak in this world, is always there is some some fault of the words. Any some mics shabd, I mean some sound of Maya comes. Like some fault of my uh, language, because this world is under the influence of past, present, and future. But the spiritual one in there, there is only one tense, which tense, Nitya Vartaman Kal, the eternal present. In the spiritual world, there is only the Nitya Vartaman Kal, eternal present time. Whatever we speak in this world of kata, time is changing, everything is changing. But in the spiritual world, everything is nitto, eternal, and in an ever fresh, newly formed. They are manifesting, for example, the beauty of Lord, His pastimes, everything always ever fresh, new, newly. This is the difference between the spiritual world and the material world. That's why Jiva Goswami says, whatever we speak in this world, any kata in this world, always there will be some a fault of Maya. Fault of Maya. No, no, like uh, in the faith, in the faith. Like for example, Krishna left Vrindavan and went to Mathura. Suppose this, Krishna left Vrindavan and went to Mathura. But actually, what is the truth? Krishna Vrindavan always stays in Vrindavan. And Mathura, this Krishna always stays in Mathura. And Dvarika, the Krishna of Dvarika always stays in Dvarika. The supreme truth, Param Sata, is Swayam Bhagavan, Parameshwar. I meditate upon him. This first talk of the Bhagta is he. Dimahi. Dimahi means I meditate upon him. <coughs> Bhagavan is performing beautiful pastimes. In the Shemad Bhagavatam is telling about the Tattva. Badanta Tattva Tavidas Yajjagana Adwe. Lord is only one, manifesting in three forms. One Parameshwara Swayam Bhagavan. He manifests himself in three forms. Three forms. In the form of Brahma, effulgence, Paramatma, super soul, and Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Brahma is the bodily effulgence of Lord, Anga Kanti. And this bodily effulgence illuminates billions of universes. 
Like the Brahma Samhita explains, the bodily fulgence of his body illuminates unlimited universes. Unlimited universes are illuminated by his bodily effulgence. Actually, everything in the spiritual world, also everything is manifested by the bodily effulgence of Lord in the spiritual world. Everything which is there. There is no need of sun in the spiritual world. For example, in the sun, if there is no sun is not rising, everything will be dark in this world. But in the spiritual world, actually there is no need of the sun. This verse explains. Only the bodily effulgence of Lord. Actually, Nakat Chandra means like the effulgency of the nails of Lord. You know, this uh, glow coming from the nails, you know, like the moon rays coming from the nail. <laughs> so, just from the glow of the nails of the feet of Krishna is enough to illuminate all the spiritual world. There's no need of sun and moon over there. In this world, the light is coming from this sun, right? And the moon is also illuminating. Like early in the morning when the sun rises, the darkness is destroyed. And everything is bright. You know, lights everywhere. When the darkness is destroyed, the ghosts, the witches, they hide quietly. But when the darkness is there, all these ghosts, witches, they start dancing. When the ghosts come, midnight, darkness time, dark time. Yesterday I told Dundukari. When he got the body of ghost, because he died in a tragic death, and also he had done so many bad things, that's why he obtained the body of Prit, some kind of ghost. And also the bad things, after death, the Bhutan, Bhutan and Preta are same? Preta is any different kind? Okay. And you've got the body of ghost. Yeah, and not two words for ghost. I mean, maybe more words for Bhut and Preta. So Shasta explains who become Bhut, ghost, who become Pishachi, which. In Agni Puran explains, like those who drink alcohol, for example, those who drink alcohol, all of them become ghosts and witches, Bhut Vishaj. In the Western world, everyone is drinking, isn't it? Isn't it? So what they will become? All of them they will become ghosts and witches. Shasta says, they will become ghosts and witches because they are drinking alcohol. In the Agni Puran, is this, it says, because those who do bad things, bad activities, for example, with, uh, involved with the wife of others, or illegally, illegally associate with women. This is their destination. So in the darkness, the ghosts, they dance, like they rejoice. All kinds of, no, no, they like are happy. All kinds of furious animals also, and violent uh, beings, they manifest, like they uh, live nicely in the darkness. But when the sun rises, 
All these violent animals, they hide. And the light comes. And who stays in the light? Demigods. And this sloka explains. Om Tad Vishnu Paramampada. This mantra of the Vedas in the Upanishads is explaining. This Supreme Bhagavan who is supreme uh, enlightening, has say, full of light. Surayo means the demigods. Dekte. Ah, the demigods are eager to see this light of Lord. Like this Lord, which is all illuminating. That's why Tamas Somaja Tirgamaya. Don't go darkness, go to Lord. Like Lord, full of light. But in the spiritual world, there are no ghosts and witches. Because there is no tomo there, this darkness or ignorance. Sattva Rajatama is not there. Even Satagun is not there. Rajagun is also not there. But speak of Tamagun. That dham is how? How is that dham? Nirgun, beyond of the modes of nature. But he is Swayam Bhagavan Shehari. He is be, beyond the three gunas of Maya. In the spiritual world, there's, there are no Satwaraj and Tama. But still, in the spiritual world, the Lilas are going on. For example, the sun is rising there also. The sun is setting. <coughs> but how is this going on? Actually, Bhagavan himself, Shri Krishna, with his inconceivable potency, he manifests in one form as the sun himself. And also as the moon, one form of Krishna also manifests as moon. Because if this would not be there, like sun, moon, lila would not take place. That's why. So, from the past time, Swayam Bhagavan, with his inconceivable potency, also manifests one moon form of all like this sun, moon, etc. For example, I give one example to you. Shimataradika is going to meet Krishna Abhisar. You know what is this? Abhisar. Shimataradika is going to meet with Krishna. This is called Abhisar and Devu. This is Nita Lila, eternal pastimes in the transcendental world, Goloka Vrindavan. So in the dark night, Shimataradika is going to meet his, her beloved. So Jagamaya arranges that when she to increase the Premin Shmatradika's heart, to increase her longing, her eagerness, Jagamaya like a manifest like a arrange a lion starts roaring. So you a lion there. <coughs> All the living beings of the Dham are favorable to Krishna's pastimes. So, we are talking this kata is actually in the, about Nitya Goloka Vrindavana Dham. Where Jat Kinchit Tirnagulma. 
means even all the grass spiders, all the living entities, they are favorable for Mukunda's pastimes. So this is going on where? Aprakat Goloka Vrindavan, unmanifest Goloka Vrindavan. This Goloka Vrindavan here is Bhoma Vrindavan. But when Krishna is coming from Aprakat Goloka Vrindavan to manifest Lila's here, so this Vrindavan is Prakat Vrindavan manifest. So how many Vrindavanas are there? First try to understand this. There are three Vrindavanas. One in Aprakart Goloka Vrindavan. Nita Chitam, spiritual spiritual world. Another. This Aprakat Vrindavan. So in Bhagavan with his Jugamaya, he's manifesting the Vrindavan in this world. This is called <coughs> Prakart. Manifest Vrindavan. Prakart Lila. Then, after the Lila is finished and ended, and Bhagavan goes back with his associates, goes away from this world, he comes with his dham and also he goes away with his dham. So, this Vrindavan that we see here, what is it then? Drishyaman Prakash, visible manifestation. Drishyaman Prakash. Now we are going to Vrindavan, Mathura, for example. Dwarika also. What is it? It's called the Shaman Prakash. The place is there, like the place where the Lord is the best time. The place is still there, but the Lilas and are not there. Radha Sham Kunda. Seva Kunja Nidovan. All the places are there. But you cannot see the past times. Bhagavan is taking one lila, the lilas from one one universe to another universe. That's why those who are very fortunate, they can still see the past times even in this world. So, for example, now in this universe in which we are present, the Lila is not here, but it's in another universe, it's going on, yes, indeed. Those are very high-class saints. In the stage of Prem already, Bhav, even after Bhav, Prem, they meditate in Ashtaka Lila always, the high class saints in their hearts that Lila from another universe manifests in his heart. Bhagavan, this shloka is saying, those who are fortunate they can see these Lilas, means high class saints. They'll have the darshan of these Lilas. The Lila is not here anymore, it's in another universe. They will see in this universe. In this universe, they will see the Lila from the other universe. Because so if you go to Vrindavan, so in this Lila, in this universe, there is no, no like this. Terada Kun is there, but the Lila is not there. But do imagine slowly, slowly, by the mercy of Jogamaya. That Lila in which is going on in another universe, that Lila will manifest in your heart. When you are in Radha Kunda, when you are in these places, you see in your heart. So, three. One, Aprakart, Goloka Vrindavan. Prakart, another. Rishman Prakash. So those who are very high saints, Jogamaya arranges in their heart that they will see the pastimes in their heart, which are going on in another universe. So even great demigods. Demigods means what when I say demigods? Great Tatagya, people who know all the truth truths. Truth. Those who have controlled their senses. 
Many gods like Indra, etc. They become completely bewildered by the pastimes of Lord. This is called like Abhidharka. We cannot establish these things like the pastimes of Krishna of logic. Tarka Abhidharkanat. With the use of your intelligence, you cannot establish this like God and the spiritual things with logic, using logic. So, Tarka Apratishtanat, you cannot establish spiritual things with material logic. Ah, because there's no sun there, but just you told that actually there is also sun. There is no sun, but there is. There is not, but there is. So what is the meaning? Whatever is there in the spiritual world. It's transcendental. And everything is favorable for, favorable for Krishna's pastimes. So there is nothing unfavorable. So we see two things in this world, favorable and unfavorable. Sometimes there is a favorable wind, sometimes a, an unfavorable wind. Sometimes someone becomes your friend, and that same person after becomes your enemy. And that same enemy later becomes your friend. In this world, we see these things happen. But in the spiritual world, it's not like this. There's nothing unfavorable. In the spiritual world, everything is favorable. It's Krishna's best things. There's also snakes in the transcendental Goloka Vrindavana Dham, unmanifest upper card. There are also snakes. But what is that snake? Favorable. Just to nourish the pastimes of Krishna. Jagamaya herself appears there in the form of snake. For example, once Shmatarazga was sulky, a man, she left Krishna, went away. She was going to Javard. Who? Shmatarad. And on the way, the path was very narrow. Like path on the forest. In the forest. There's so much, like many bushes full of thorns, both sides. She couldn't go right side nor left, only straight. So to break the man of Shmatiradika, Jogamaya herself appeared as a snake and like a hissing and raising its hood in front of Shmatiradika. And then Shmatiradika saw that snake became so afraid. So she couldn't go forward because the snake was there. Couldn't go right nor left because so many bushes and thorns. She couldn't go right nor left. So what Shmatiradika did, she had to go back. But the snake was like with two, the tongue outside, like, like hissing, and red eyes, the snake, like prepared to attack him in front of Shmatirat. But this is not going on in this world, but in the upper part, Goloka Brindavana, this in the spiritual world, going on, unmanifest. Shmatirat became afraid, and then she went back calling out, Hey Krishna, strong Krishna, Mahabhava, please protect me. <laughs> then Shmatriyat came raised Krishna and her man was gone. Demigods. 
In meditation, when you see this past time, they became astonished. To attain this kind of places, the demigods, they are so eager to get the transcendental dham, divine dham of Lord. The demigods are so eager. Prakart and Aprakart Lila. Some Lilas are neat and some Lilas are Naimitic, temporary. And only Bhava Matra. The Naimitic Lila are only Bhava Matra. And the mood is there in the spiritual world. Even, for example, Krishna, what is when he's doing the Ras Lila, for example. When he disappears from the past dance, the gopis, they're suffering separation. And thinking so much about Krishna, feeling separation. The gopis start to act and act all the past times of Krishna. Some gopis say, says, oh, I'm Jashoda. Other gopis, other gopis, Another group says, I am Krishna. Oh, I'm Jashoda. So, like, for example, then Krishna, this gopi pretending to be Krishna, sits on the lap of Jashoda, which is actually also a gopi pretending to be Jashoda. Like, like acting like. And they start to imitate the pastimes. But for example, Putana Moksha Lila. When Krishna was only six days old, Krishna killed first to whom? Putana. So Putana Moksha Lila is there. The deliverance of Putana. Krishna was six days old. And he killed Putana. He killed. It's so, okay, Putana was delivered. Putana Moksha Lila. But when the gopis were acting these lilas, who would become Putana? No one wanted. The lila is eternal. So to make this lila happen, Jagamaya herself appears in the form of Putana, manifesting the form of Putana in this moment. Because no gopi will become Putana, even for acting drama, like imitating the past time. No. No one accepts anything unfavorable. Do you understand or not what I said? Who will become Putana? So imagine some Lila is here going on, like a drama. Drama. What, which, which play? Which drama? Putana Mokshan Lila. So someone will have to be Putana, right? The role. Somebody needs to be Krishna, isn't it? Somebody can become Putana here for the past sake of the past times. But in the spiritual world, who would become The Lila is eternal. The Lila has to be shown. So actually, at that moment, Yoga Maya herself takes the role of Putana. And then they show this Lila, Putana Moksha Lila. I'm talking, this is going on in the upper cart, Goloka Vrindavan. <coughs> when the gopis are feeling separation from Krishna in the Mahabhal. Some gopis says, I am Krishna. Another gopi. So when Gopi say I'm Krishna and then it's just like killing Putana. It's destroying this past thing. But no Gopi wants to pick, make the role, take the role of Putana. You can become Putana, right? But there no one would become Putana. Here also you can become Kamsa. Oh, let's do the Lila of Kamsa being killed. Kamsa of Lila. But in there, no one would become Kamsa. But they also need to show the Lila, so... <coughs> Joga Maya is arranging. So. 
And this unfavorable pastime is Pratikulila, are only Bhava Matra, only mood. But in this world, when Samar Bhagavan brings his pastimes here, then the form of tonight's showing is coming. These demons are there, like taking form. That's why even great demigods, like high demigods, when I say demigods, actually, means high class saints. They also become bewildered with these pastimes of Lord. Umjante Jatsurayu, this verse of Bhagavatam, first verse is explained. The demigods become bewildered with Krishna's pastimes. High class saints, they become bewildered. Even great demigods, when I see this pastime, they become so bewildered. And directly or indirectly, all these lilas are going on. Mean, the meaning is anai, directly or indirectly, means meeting and separation. What did I say? The meeting and separation lilas are taking place. Indirectly or directly? So in the Krishna Lila, the Milan Lila is going on. So much happiness. But when there is separation, then it looks like they are suffering. But in the spiritual world, there is no, there's no suffering. No unhappiness. Another point also. Because that Dham is Ananda Dham. The place of the abode of bliss. That is the Ananda Dham, about the bliss. There is no anything bad there. And there is no opposite word of Ananda. What did I say? <laughs> Everything is only bliss, bliss, bliss. Ananda Dham, Vulukha Vrindavan. The Pandits, and they say, there is no antonym or opposite word for Ananda. All the words generally they have antonym, antonym. but Ananda has no, doesn't have. For example, antonym of happiness is unhappiness. Sukh dukh, happiness or happiness. In this world, some people are happy, some are miserable, unhappy. Some are happy, some are happy. But in the spiritual world, everyone is happy, means blissful, ananda. What is the opposite word, antonym of ananda? There is no antonym for ananda. Ah, maybe you can say nirananda, like no ananda, like nirananda. But you put the prefix, prefix nir. So actually, you just made this up. Because there is no natural antonym for Ananda. A real antonym is something when you don't need to put prefix. For example, night. Antonym of night is day. So what is the op antonym of day? Is night. <coughs> You can also say non-day, like day and non-day, something like that. Night and non-night, or something you can... No, you can say, you can like a create, but it's not real antonym. The real antonym is like day and night, this is proper. You can put the O, like A, in the front, in, in Hindi Sanskrit, but in English, or you can put no in the beginning. But real antonym is like it's completely opposite. For example, women. Woman, antonym of woman is men. Man. Man, woman, woman, man. So there are really antonyms. 
but sometimes because of some lack of specific no no because of some default fault of the words we put we put the prefix to use the antonym for example happiness and unhappiness okay so like ha happy and sad as in happy sad but you can also put happy and unhappy so, because I wouldn't even want to this point. The real opposite of happy is like sadness. Happiness, sadness. But you can also put like un unhappiness. And the opposite also like a miserable, non miserable, like a person who is not who is not unhappy. You can also put this prefix to say the opposite, the antonym. But actually, Ananda doesn't have this. Nirananda. If you put the prefix ni, like no bliss. Nirananda. But it's not actual antonym. Everything in this world, in the spiritual world, is ananda blissful and favorable for Krishna's pastimes. Mm. <laughs> this verse explains Jat Kinchit Trinagoma Satamukha. So the word Mukunda is used in this verse. Mukunda generally we define as someone who gives liberation. Like you're feeling unhappy in this world? So to be free from the suffering, one who frees you from the suffering is Mukunda. But this definition that we are giving, the first definition of Mukunda is Mukti Dati Dadati Jasa Iti Mukunda. Means one person who is delivering the jivas of the suffering and giving them bliss the he is called Mukunda Mukunda but the word Mukunda in the spiritual world actually his face is very beautiful like the Kunda flower very beautiful, attractive and fragrant it is called Mukunda Krishna himself there are many meanings of Mukunda this word. One of the names of Bhagavan is Mukunda. Mukti Dadate Jasaiti is Mukunda. Who gives liberation is Mukunda. We want liberation from the material world. We want liberation or cure of, from the disease. We want to be delivered from the birth and death. Or we want to enter the mukti also, means to sayuja mukti, merging Brahma. There are five kinds of liberations salokya, sarsti, samepo, sarupya, and sayuja mukti. Five kinds of mukti yeah? described. So this word mukunda. This meaning for Mukunda in the spiritual world is not there. Because in the transcendental world, God's name is Mukunda because his face, lotus face, Mukaravinda, are like the is like the Kunda flower, one kind of flower. Very beautiful, fragrant, charming, attractive. That's why his name is Mukunda. So this is the topmost definition of Mukunda. He who is always fragrant. Ah, smiling. No, he's smiling. He's so hasta means he's always smiling. Always smiling. <coughs> Manifesting the bhav. Krishna, for example, Krishna. After disappearing from the rasa, Lila, when he appeared back, how was his lotus face? Smiling, smiling so much, a beautiful smile. 
Ta sama vyrobit šouris. When Krishna appeared in the assembly of the gopis, how was his beautiful smile? With his smile, he was attracting and charming, mesmerizing everyone. And like he was giving this lust in their hearts. The beautiful to sweet of Krishna is so beautiful that is manifesting the prem in everyone's hearts. His lotus face. Come when I say that manifesting lust actually prem is coming in the heart. Because there is no material lust there. So beautiful, his lotus face smiling. And seeing this, all of them, you know, all the gopis, they felt in their hearts, prema, coming in their hearts, because when they saw the, his lotus face, smiling. This shloka explains, tasam averabit, so, his face was so beautiful. This is his nita swarup, eternal form. What I want to say is that, the topmost definition of Mukunda, highest explanation of Mukunda, is he who has the face like the Kunda flower, always super attractive and beautiful. The other definitions are for others. <coughs> the other definitions of Mukunda are for others. <coughs> but for the gopis, the definition of Mukunda is what? He whose lotus face is as like the Kunda flower. <coughs> Always attractive. <coughs> Sorry, I'm manifesting so much blame in the heart. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, and all the bondages automatically were removed. What are these bondages of the book? Which kind of bondages? This bondages to meet with Krishna. So many bondages. They are also destroyed. They become also free, delivered from these bondages. All the obstacles to meet with Krishna, automatically they are removed. So, Mokonda has many meanings. Vishwanath Chakravarti explains in the commentaries. The general meaning, one who gives liberation is called Mukunda. One who gives liberation from the material world is Mukunda. Liberation from the cycle of birth and death is Mukunda. <coughs> Sorry. And or one who gives liberation. Four kinds of liberation. Bhagavan says, My devotees, they don't want Sloka, Sarsti, Swarupi, Samipya. Even if I offer them, my devotees don't want to accept it, Lord saying. So, what speak of Sayuja Mukti? Who wants Sayuja Mukti? Sayuja Mukti means oneness with Brahma. Does anyone want it? Maybe you're doing bhajan or not. But just listening to the name, you don't want it. You know you don't want it. Bhagavan says, Mat Sevanamjana, I mean, those people who serve me, even if I offer Salukya, Sarsti, Samipya, 
and rupia. They don't want this. So what speak of Sayuja? To merging Brahma? Who wants this? Those who serve Bhagavan, they don't want these liberations. Even if Krishna is offering, they don't want it. So another also explanation of Mukti of Mukunda, sorry. No, explanation of Mukti is to attain the feet of Vishnu is also Mukti. Attaining the lotus feet of Lord is Mukti. Vishnu Angra Labai Mukti. First definition is Atanta Dukkha Nivriti Mukti. To be free from the sufferings. Second is to attain the feet of Vishnu. This is another definition of Mukti. The third and topmost definition is to be in your own swaru of your soul, giving up all the material desires, doing bhajan slowly, slowly, your heart becomes clean. And with this pure heart, you will realize your own swaru, the spiritual form. And then when you attain your spiritual form, then you directly, in the, with your transcendental senses, you serve God who also has transcendental senses, Lord. So you serve Him. This is the topmost definition. Mukta Janatarupam Swaswarupyanasti means you'll be in your own spiritual form. Yesterday I told you, you have everything, you have this form. Bhaktivinoda Thakur in the Jaiva Dharma says, you have in a very subtle way like a seed, bija, troop. But doing bhajan slowly, 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 hearing harikata, chanting holy names, etc. Slowly, slowly, this will come out. Just like a seed. Imagine a seed. Bij. Imagine the seed of a gigantic banyan tree. The seed is super small. Have you seen the seed of the banyan tree? The fruit is also very small and the seed has like a thousand seeds inside one small fruit. The banyan tree. Banyan fruits. Not banana. Banyan is one kind of ficus. Anyway, it's very small and so many seeds inside. You can open and see. When it becomes ripe, you see so many seeds. One, one seed, one seed has the potency of all one big tree, like a gigantic tree inside the po potency inside of one small small seed. You cannot even see it. You cannot see that the big tree is inside that seed. But when you put the seed in the soil, like when you sow it, then you give water, you know, soil, water, oxygen, everything. Then you'll see that the seed will sprout. <coughs> then becomes a small plant, slowly, slowly, becomes a gigantic banyan tree. So the jivas in their hearts, they have. You have this with you. Doing bhajan slowly, slowly. Here in Harikata, <coughs> following Bhakti, this beach, this seed which is in your heart, your swarup, will what? Manifest. Jiva Goswami gives example. Imagine if, if there is no rice in the husk, and you're just hitting, hitting the husk, but there's no rice inside. The rice will not come out because there's no... So paddy, paddy, right? The husk, the rice inside. But if you're just like hitting, hitting, trying to take the rice out of the paddy, of the husk, but there's no rice inside the husk anymore. It would be useless work because there's no rice inside that husk, the paddy. If again and again you're shaking that husk, trying to remove the rice from inside, Nothing will come out because actually the rice was not there anymore. So something which was there can manifest. Simple way. What is the meaning? In the heart of the jivas, this bostu is there, like this form of the soul. 
<coughs> but by the association, that's why by associating with the sadhus, Shravan Kirtan, this what you have will manifest. Hmm. By listening, Harikata and Chanti Hulim, slowly, slowly, it will manifest because you already have it. Just like a seed. Just like a seed. And hearing and chanting is like the water. That's for watering. And then the seed slowly, slowly will sprout, become a plant. Then later on, it will become a gigantic tree. Now you're watering here. This seed sprouts, becomes a creeper, and goes to where? To Goloka Vrindavan. Here, the gardener is giving water. Like here, you are every day giving water. What is the water? Remember? Shravan and Kirtan is the water. Here, Harikata. And like, glorify Harikata, holy names. Follow Bhakti is the water. And this seed which you have in your heart. This seed sprouts, becomes a plant, creeper, and crosses the universe. <coughs> you are here, but you don't know where you have gone, so your creeper is far away. The gardener is watering here, the plants, in this world. You are watering here. But your seed now has sprouted became a creeper and is crossing the universe and going further away crossing the 14 planetary systems seven lower planetary systems and seven upper after crossing that your creeper goes to there are coverings of the material universe eight coverings There are, in all sides of the universe, there are eight coverings, covering, eight layers, very subtle layers, earth, ether, ether air, fire, water, and man, buddhi, ahankar, is eight, mind, intelligence, ego. So after crossing these eight layers, eight coverings, then you have to cross the like darkness, then comes the Viraja. After Viraja, then is Jyotidam, effulgence place. After Jyotidam, Sadashivilok. After Sadashivilok, Vaikuntha Dham. Ah, then your creeper is going after Vaikuntha Dham, going up Ayodhya. After Ayodhya, Dharika, Dharika Mathura, and then reaches Golok Vrindavan. <coughs> then your creeper has five branches five branches coming out of your creeper but at the time the gardener needs to trim one one branches cut cut it out trimming trimming needs to trim prune only one will remain you know the loki, one vegetable? The plant of the loki also manifests so many like branches and so many. You need to cut and trim, you know, this plant. So in the same way. The gardener, the gardener means the sadak. So there are these five branches coming out of the creeper. So you cut four of them, he will cut out. Cut off. Four. Shanta, Dasa, Sakya, Vatsali, cut. Only one remaining. Which one? Madhuri. 
And this Madura also will come out five branches from the Madhuri branch. Five from the Madhuri branch. Also, you cut four, remain only one more. One. Radharanita has five kinds of sakis. Saki, Nita Saki, Prana Saki, Prishta Saki, Prana Prishta Saki. So, Nita Saki, Prana Saki, you can keep. Others you cut. Nita Saki, Prana Saki is Manjari Bhav. All the Tata Siddhanta is given. The Sadaka is here doing the bhajan. But his creepers there in Golok, Vrindavan. <clears throat> then the fruit will come to your creeper, a fruit. And what will happen with the fruit? The fruit will come here in this world. In the Chitana Charitamrita, Mahaprabhu himself gave all these examples to Rupa Goswami. He told himself, Mahaprabhu told all these things. <coughs> the fruit will become ripened. The, fri the fruit is there. But it ripens and comes here to you in this world. And then the gardener will relish this fruit. It's so beautiful, this bhav. It will come. We are speaking. This is all from the Janma Dasi Jat. It's first look of the Bhagavad. I will get this beautiful fruit. <coughs> By hearing and chanting slowly, slowly, this transcendental mood will come in your heart. That already you have, whatever you have already, it will come out. Like will manifest. It's not coming from outside, not external things coming. What, what is inside will manifest. Something which you already have. Now it's like latent or hidden or like sleeping. It will manifest. Like dormant. Another example. Just like a kid boy or girl when they are young like boy and girl their limbs are not manifesting so much the more they grow up then their bodily limbs manifest completely in the same way something you already have with you doing bhajana slowly slowly oh, no. and the more your bhajana becomes mature Maturity in the bhajan means Srada, Sada, Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anartha Nivriti, Nishta, Luchi, Ashakti, Bhav. <coughs> after Bhav, then? Actually, after Ashakti is Roti. After Ashakti is Roti. After Roti, Bhav. After Bhav, this bhav becomes mature and manifests as brain. <coughs> this brain manifests many kinds of sweetness, madhuri. Many levels of brain. <laughs> Levels, Nehaman, Pranay, Raganurag, Bhav, Mahabhav, Rura, Adirura, Mohan, Madanaki, this is all described in Ujjavan Nilamani. Mahaprabhu himself, to the only status to Rupa Goswami. You just need to just water with Shavana Kirtan. Means following Nava Vida Bhakti.
If you don't have time to follow Nava Vida Bhakti, you can follow Pancha Vida Bhakti. Sadhu Sangha, Nama Sankirtan, Nama Bhakti Shravana, Matura Vasa, and serve the deity with faith. Ah, I also cannot do that. Five limbs of Bhakti. Okay, three Vida Bhakti. Only three things of Bhakti. Do Shravana, Kirtan, Smara. Ah, I also cannot do that. So do only? Kirtan, Nakya Bhakti. Especially in this Kaliyuga, everything is manifest by Namas and Kirtan. Everything is in the holy names. <coughs> Sixty-four limbs of bhakti, and then nine limbs of bhakti, then five limbs of bhakti, then three limbs of bhakti, <coughs> then in the end only one. to chant all the names, you have to chant in Sadhu Sangha. If you chant alone, maybe you'll become Gita Samsara. A Gita Samsara will come of you. So I have to chant in the Sadhu Sangha. There's nothing else in this world to be delivered from this world. To conquer this world, there's only one way. Sadhu Sangha, in Sadhu Sangha, chant the holy names. Nama Sankirtan. Directly or indirectly. Onai means actually meeting, and Beatarik indirectly means Biraha separation. Time's up, cannot speak more. But the separation nourishes the meeting. The more you have Biraha, the more you have separation from Lord, feeling separation, and the more you will be able to relish the Milan Ros, sweetness of the meeting. Separation nourishes the meeting. <coughs> Just like the cloth putting in the saffron dye again and again. So, directly, God manifests many past times. Viraha Lila, Milan Lila, two kinds of past names. How is Bhagavan showing this? In Vrindavan, whether in Vrindavan, whether in Mathura, whether in Dwarika Puri. <coughs> Always Milan Viraha, meeting separation. In Dwarika also there is separation. Shemad Bhakti describes that when Krishna, sometimes Krishna had to go to Hastinapur, left Dwarka and went to Hastinapur, and then the queens of Dwarka. <laughs> in the ruler, Bhav, in the Mahabhav, they were so absorbed and feeling separation from Krishna. <coughs> Just like Shemantana has this divine transcendental madness, the queens of Dwarak also have a little bit of it. The name of this is Mahishigit, their shlokas they spoke. Mahishigit. This is present in Shemad Bhagavatam. How many Gitas are present in the Bhagavatam? Many. Many Gitas in the Bhagavatam. Five are main. But there are many Gitas. Lila Git? Rudra Git, Gopi Git, Brahmana Git, Benu Git, 
Jugal git. All these gitas are described. So one of them is Mahishi Gita. Just like the gopis, they were suffering separation from Krishna. In the same way, the queens of Dwarka also. They were also suffering separation from Krishna. Seeing these birds, the queens of Dwarka, they were like tea, um, provoking. Provoking, they were provoking Krishna, saying many things about him. So, I just want to say that you have it with you. You already have it, everything with you. It's not coming from outside. About this Nita, uh, Prakardam, Prakardam, and uh, Debadi, Sailila, Karagorai. Uh, in Vrindavan, Sevakunj, that thing about their putting the Lardu, this uh, thing for brushing tooth, everything they put, nighttime, morning time, is scattered. They're saying because you always say sometimes, oh, every day, every night, Raslil is going on. Just how to reconcile this with the. I understand what you say, Prakat and Prakat and Drishaman Prakash. And this other body, Sailila, those who are Premadasha, they will see the Lila, which is going on in another universe. But how to reconcile with this, just these facts that are like Seva Kunja, this one, for example. Even those who spend the night there become crazy, the monkeys disappear. Krishna has inconceivable potency. If it's possible, potency is possible. You cannot, with the logic, you cannot discuss. I know what you said, but uh, if you go to Nidavan or Seva Kunja, they say that they put the ingredients for service in the night time and the next day the pujari comes and sees that everything is used scattered the thing for to brushing the tooth pan, betel nuts everything is scattered like used whatever they give in the night time for the day but how the deal is going on now or something like that God is independent, Swatanda Sechamai Purush. He's performing his pastimes. This is beyond our logic. We cannot think of and discuss, like, yeah, not like logically understand this. But who saw this Lila? Shasta explains. Who saw the Lila? So, what did I say? In the Kunja, <laughs> the ingredients are there and the other things. The Pujari opened and he saw that all the ingredients were scattered. This is true. The Lila is going on, but we don't see it. And the body say Lila. Those who are fortunate, they are seen. Don't discuss too much about it. Nastikata. Nastik. Atheism. Okay, if you discuss too much, then there's maybe some dishonoring and atheism come. Maybe atheism. Like, oh, how is it possible? Just accept and whatever they are speaking. Doing bhajana slowly, slowly, also you'll realize that these things will have this faith, will have the realization. Okay? So those who are unfortunate, they are seen. They keep by pai, they can see. Have you seen? So don't discuss with logic. Whatever they are, who, those who are saying, they are saying. That's it. Just accept and follow. What is the, your problem? Okay. 
So with logic, don't try to understand each and everything with your logical understanding. The dumb is eternal, the dumb is transcendental. When Bhagavan wants to do anything, who knows like what to say? The possible becomes impossible, impossible becomes possible. So a recent married person, husband and wife, recent married, they came to Vrindavan. And the wife died in Vrindavan after two, four days of the wed wedding. The man, the man became like crazy, like mad, because his wife recently died. Kishori, <coughs> wife's name was Kishori. So he started saying, speak, calling out, Kishori, Kishori. These stories there is true. So after Ras Lila, Shemateradika told, I want to give Dashan to him, Larita told. He's calling his own wife's names. He's mad for his wife. Radharani said, I don't care, it's my name. <clears throat> I'm the only Kishori in Vrindavana. <clears throat> the story is there. And then, Shumatratka gave darshan to him. <clears throat> we hear this. <clears throat> Just have faith in the kata. The land is transcendental. The lilas are transcendental. Ah, how possible? How possible? Give up this. How, how, how? So we faith. Do pranam to Vrindavan, that's it. Do pranam to that dust. Do pranam to the kata, and that's it. Those who are staying in Vrindavana, they are not ordinary persons. Sukrit so from many, many lives. And Pais did from many lives, they are living in Vrindavan. <coughs> it's not, not, not uh, easy and uh, ordinary things to live in Vrindavan. Those who stay in Vrindavan, this is true. But also, according to the Shastra, we say there is also a net of Maya over the dam. Bhaktivinoda Thakur also says, Seventh Goswami, everyone is actually living on the net of, sorry, this net of Maya is covering the dam. Those who do bhajan, doing bhajan slowly, slowly, he is actually living the transcendental Vrindavana dam. But not with the gross body, but with the transcendental bhavana of his transcendental moods like you can even stay here and be in Vrindavan understand Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj said I'm not in the United States I'm always in Vrindavan in his lecture he told <coughs> the disciple said Gurudev where do you stay he said I'm always in Vrindavan but you're here <coughs> no your mood is you think like you are here but I am not According to your mood, I mean the mood is main part. The mood manifests the thing, everything. One demon, evil person. Oh, he even puts his foot on the on the photo of Krishna Gurudeva. Ah, he's not a sadhu. And he rubs his feet in the photo of Guru, the Sadhu. They ask this to Swami Maharaj. So uh, somebody steps on your foot, on your apkya? If, uh, are you there in that photo or not? When a demon, when a demon steps on your photo, you are there or not? But a devotee, he also is having your photo in the altar. What is the difference? Devotees ask Swami Maharaj, you can ask, you can read. De what's the answer Swami Maharaj gave? Like, photo of devotee keeping Guru in the altar? And another demon stepping the photo of the Guru Dev. <coughs> so the mood, everything depends on the mood. The devotee sees the photo, he's printing to the photo. So the God accepts your mood. Like, your mood will manifest everything else. <coughs> A person who is lusty, he'll see lust everywhere. I am lusty and everyone is like me, he'll think. The also thief thinks everyone is a thief. Some, everyone is stealing somehow. A thief, a person who is like evil, he thinks, I steal, 
everyone is also stealing somehow by tax, like cheating the taxes, something like that. <laughs> this is true or not? According to your mood, you'll see everything in that mood only. Depending on the mood, you're so I say two kinds of visions. You cannot walk closing your eyes, like everybody's looking, seeing. You're blind or you can see? You have eyes or not? So what will you see? Depending on which kind of vision you have, depending on your mood, that will influence in what you're seeing. This is true or not? Depending on your mood. Some, sometimes she's in the form of mother, sometimes on the shape of like a mother, son. Anyway, it depends on your mood. Some people think he's a sadhu, some people think he's not a sadhu. He's, he's a sadhu. Whatever is there, this will manifest. If you say, oh, this, there's one kind of fruit which is reddish, gunja fall. And you say, what is this? This is actually not fire. This is gunja fall because it's also reddish. So how to see if it's fire or not? You have to put your hand to see if it's burning. Fruit, fruit, gunja. I was thinking it was the fruit because it's also red. Like you thought the gunja fall, this fruit was a fire, but when you put your hand you saw it, it didn't burn, so it's not. So what I want to say is that those things which are in that thing only, these will manifest. For example, if the fire is the fire, the fire will burn. The fruit is not the fire, so the fruit doesn't burn. Like whatever is there from that substance, only that can manifest, nothing else. Some people stay in Vrindavan and are doing bhajan. Real bhajan. And some people are pretending to do bhajan. It's different also. A person sometimes is doing bhajan. We are doing bhajan. Some people do bhajan. We also stay in Vrindavan. Stayed. To do, stay in the dam doing bhajan. And to, to, to stay outside the dam doing bhajan, there is some difference. Like to do bhajan inside or outside the dam. It's different. If I speak too much, your mind will be disturbed. You will not understand. You won't be able to understand. Like you're in Bhuj thinking about Vrindavan, but you're in Vrindavan thinking about Bhuj. It's also good because Bhuj is also Dham. The Dham of Sheshnag. Isn't it? When you go to the Mandir, Sheshnag is there. Oh, the Prabhu is directly there. In Bhuj, but the Prabhu is there directly. Yes. You didn't go upstairs, up, up in the mountain in Bhuj? Do we have Darshan of Takuji? Yes, it's Nagabad, the Prabhu is there. It's written. People may say any other thing, but really, who is that sage? It's about the Prabhu himself. If you get the mercy of Baladeva, then you can live in Vrindavan. 
you didn't go up in the hill. Always when we go, we do pranam to that hill where is the Sheshnag on top in Buj. That's why the name Buj, is it, is the name of the city. She's <laughs> Huh? <laughs> 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 